All right, so let's say I had a long cylinder, long hollow cylinder with positive charges flowing down the length of that cylinder. They were just flowing down the entire length of the cylinder. So uh, let's say I applied a magnetic field. And again, I'm gonna put I'm going to apply this magnetic field into the board everywhere where this lovely hollow cylinder is. My question is, so those charges inside this hollow cylinder, what direction is the force they feel? Cool, same thing we did here earlier. It's going to be up just like it was initially here as well, right? Nothing changed here. Well, technically, what I didn't tell you is that the positive charge is moving in here. That's is actually, it's not a hollow cylinder. It is a metal wire. So, and what we have flowing through it is current, conventional current in this case, the pretend flow of positive charges in our metal wire here. And so in this case, we've got a current I flowing to the right through this wire, and it's gonna feel a net magnetic force upward as we just demonstrated, exactly the same way. And we have another right hand rule for this. So your magnetic field is still your fingers. And guess what your velocity is now, or sorry, guess what your thumb is now since it's not technically velocity. It's the direction of the current, but the current really is just the direction of the flow of positive charges. Cool, and then coming out your palm is still the force. And so technically this is a separate right hand rule, but really it's kind of the same right hand rule. Now, let me ask you a question though. This is conventional current, imaginary flow of positive charges. What's real current? Negative, Negative charges that are really flowing where? Opposite. The opposite direction. So let's take that into account. So magnetic field still points in. So, but now my negative charges are actually flowing this way. But because they're negative, my palm points down, but because they're negative, the force would still point up. So whether you look at it as conventional current flowing to the right or actual electrons flowing left, the force is the same either way. So you can't, well again, for positive charges, the force comes out your palm, but for a negative charge, the force comes out the back of your hand. It's the opposite. Well, because whether it's conventional current, positive charges flowing this way, or it's electrons flowing the opposite way, so I actually can't tell the difference at the end of the day real easy. So, and it turns out, you know, back a couple hundred years ago, they guessed wrong and they thought it was positive charges flowing this way, but through a wire, it's actually negative charges flowing this way. But we can use our right hand rule and figure out the force would be up regardless of how you took it. Cool, but be careful. When you see the letter I here, we're giving you conventional current, not in the actual flow of electrons, but conventional current. Okay, and it turns out that force Portion of the magnetic field, so and the current, and the length of your wire, and again, there's actually a cross product in this, and you have a sine theta. And so in this case, if your current and your magnetic field so aren't exactly 90 degrees apart, then you'll have to factor in that ang angle theta. In this case, how far apart is the magnetic field and the current? They're 90 degrees apart, and sine of 90 is one, and it's gonna go away for this example, stuff like this. Um, but cool, just now the force on a current carrying wire. So I think the wire would be, be the wire would be pulled up. Yeah, that wire is feeling a net pull upward. So oftentimes you'll see a question like this and you'll find out that this wire is hovering in the air. And if it's hovering in the air, what must be true? I mean, the upward force must be perfectly balancing a downward, downward force. And what downward force would we be talking about? gravity and so we'd find out that this guy equals mg they're an equal magnitude opposite directions cool and you can find the mass or you could find the strength of the magnetic field if you knew the mass or vice versa essentially they'll give you all the variables except one cool so let's look at question number two question number two says a wire with 10 amps of current so directed west horizontally so in this case We'll call this west. Uh, with a linear mass density, this is going to be fun, of 0.5 grams per centimeter. 
is suspended vertically in the air due to the presence of a magnetic field, exactly what we were just talking about. So what is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field? So in this case, if we set up our free body diagram on this thing, we've got an upward force, and that's your magnetic force, and then we've got the downward force, the weight. And in this case, if it's suspended, then the sum of the forces adds up to zero. No acceleration, then MA is zero. Cool, and that means we've got a magnetic force minus mg equals zero. That magnetic force is BIL, and again, sine theta is gonna fall out of this one since they're perpendicular. Cool, what are we solving for in this case? Magnetic field, so if we do some rearranging here, So your magnetic field is going to equal mg over il. So do we know the mass of this wire? No. Do we know how long it is? No. What do we know in regards to that? We know the mass per unit length is this 0.5 grams per centimeter. So we know that m over l is 0.5 grams per centimeter. So in this case, we know m over l as a whole. Now, do I want it in grams per centimeter? What units do I want it in? Uh, kilograms per meter. Kilograms per meter. So how do I get this in kilograms per meter? So if I put this in kilograms per centimeter, I'm going to divide by 1,000. But if I wanted to convert that to meters, I'm going to multiply by 100. So you divide by 1,000, multiply by 100. What do I really need to do this thing? Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Awesome. Cool. And so if we go to solve for this lovely magnetic field, I'll rearrange this a little bit, m over l times g over i, and m over l is the 0.05 kilograms per meter. Gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and the current of 10 amps. Can somebody get me a magnetic field. Cool, if you notice multiplying by 9.8 over 10 is gonna make it just a teeny bit tinier than 0.05. Great. <laughs>